Hey folks, it's God's comic Brad Stein, and you are about to witness a miracle. Do you remember when Prince came up with the song, well, I'm going to party like it's 1999? Well, guess what? This special that no one has seen but it's a handful of people in California was done New Year's Eve 1999 to 2000. This precedes Rebel Without a Curse. This is like a bootleg. This is something very few, if anybody, has ever seen. The original starting of my career, where I say I'm a Christian conservative, destroyed my career in the mainstream, but said there's Americans that want somebody to stand for their point of view. I've talked about car phones and getting in wrecks. I talked about everything that was the 90s moving into the 2000s that became prescient, literally prophesied where America was going. So sit back, relax, and enjoy never-before-seen film of the original Rebel Without a Curse that started my career. Nobody's seen it till now. Enjoy. My name is Brad Stein. You may have heard of me. You may have seen me. I'm a professional comedian, but my secret desire is to be a ramp model. <laughs> have you ever seen these people? They make like a billion dollars an hour to walk. And then they got a face like this job is too hard. <laughs> Let me tell you something, if I made like $10,000 an hour to walk, here's my face. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I wanna be a ramp model. I wanna be a ramp everything. I think we need more ramp jobs. We need ramp mechanics. Lots of ramp stuff. That's my motto. Lots of ramp stuff. I'm glad to be here in San Diego, though, because this is Southern California. I love it. United States of America. I believe in it. I'm proud of it. The melting pot of the world. But here we are in Southern California, the melting pot of the United States. I'll prove it. How many people are actually from San Diego? Round of applause. You're from here. And how many people are actually not from San Diego? Round of applause. You're not from here. And apparently happier people for some reason. <laughs> All the San Diego people are like, yes, but we went out. We went out. <laughs> See, we got people from all over the country. That's what our country's about. It's about people from all over the world and the country getting right here, and I'll prove it to you. I'll bet you, I'll bet you we got the whole country represented here right now. Let's find out. Where's the Midwestern people? You're from the Midwest. Round of applause. Right? There they are. See that? See them? See how polite they clap? All the Midwesterners, here we are. Are we too loud? Do you want a muffin? I'll put some gravy on it. They're Midwestern, but they're sweet, but I'll prove you that. Wait, let's see, let's see, let's see. Where's the Southern people? Southern people, Southern. And they do that Southern thing. Woo! There's like 20 of them, but they were actually communicating. Woo! like wolves in the wilderness. Woo, 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 woo. That is a complete sentence down south right there, folks. Woo. I love that. I love people that can cheer and call hogs at the same time. I love people like that. Woo. The Midwesterner people got scared. Oh, they're loud. They're loud. Where's the East Coast people? You got East Coast people here? Hear them? They're here, but they're angry. <laughs> they're mad I'm making them do stuff. Hey, you're the funny boy, do something. <laughs> and the, and the, and the uh, let's see, the uh, West Coast people. Where are the West Coast people? There they are. There. <laughs> the world's here, the country's here. Our country is here. I like that. I like that. We got a happy New Year, folks. We are about to change. A big, big, giant change is happening, folks. Thousand year millennium, hundred year century, new year, man, it's happening just in a few hours. And we can say that too, Happy New Year. What a great thing, I just say Happy New Year. Nobody's afraid of that, are they? Nobody's afraid to say Happy New Year, are we? We just passed a holiday, didn't we? What was that? Christmas. 
But nobody says that anymore, do they? Merry Christmas. You used to say it. Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas to you. What do people say now? Oh, Happy Holidays. <laughs> See, I only say Happy Holidays because I don't want to say Christmas because you don't believe in Christmas because I don't want to offend you because I don't. <laughs> You be offended by it. Yeah, yeah, nothing more offensive than Christmas. Let me think. What's, but I'm trying to think, what is worse, that peace on earth or that goodwill towards men thing? Man, does that offend me. It's ridiculous that people say happy holidays. Like, oh, they're trying to mask the fact that they don't want to say Christmas. Oh, happy holidays, because there's so many holidays in December. There's two. Hanukkah and Christmas. That's it. I mean, unless you're going to count Boxing Day. There's one called Boxing Have you seen that? December 26th, or some holiday called Boxing Day. Which I don't know, apparently represents all the fights you get into trying to return all the junk you got for Christmas and what that's all about. Yeah, I'd like to return this fruitcake. <laughs> but selling fruitcakes! Do holidays, Hanukkah and Christmas, they act like we gotta say holidays so we can get them all in. Or no, people don't wanna say Christmas because Christmas has Christ in it and after 2,000 years, he's still intimidating people. That's what's going on. He's still scaring See, it's intellectual lies and because of their bias. Because what about Valentine? Okay, let's take February. February's got like 20 holidays in it. Nobody says happy holidays in February. <laughs> they say happy President's Day. They say happy Valentine's Day. Nobody's scared. Oh, I didn't mean to say Valentine's in case you don't believe in love. <laughs> they say what it is. Nobody's ashamed. Nobody's embarrassed. They're taking it too far. People get all in show. Oh, I got all offended. You gotta be kidding me. The whole world's gotta stop because some atheist got offended. I'll tell you what, why don't you move to Baghdad? Start getting offended at their holidays. They'll tolerate that about as long as it takes to cut off your hand. But they don't. See, that, that's what's cool about it. It's okay, it matters though. Christmas is a great holiday. It matters where you have Christmas too. Last Christmas, I was in Las Vegas. Talk about an old flash in Christmas. Just like when I was a kid. Oh boy, yeah, neon lights everywhere, people puking in the curbs. <laughs> Parents gambling away all my Christmas money. Just like grandma's house. <laughs> it's weird though, it's weird because what happened? The guy fell off the stage, it's okay, all right. <laughs> Suddenly the cameraman was like, I really hurt my knee bad on that one. But it's good, to, it's good to be here with people like you because we can celebrate stuff, we can celebrate the holidays coming in. I'm glad about that. I'm glad about people from all over the country here, and you made it safe. You made it safe. Because it's hard to drive out there, I'm telling you. I just drove up here. I just drove out from South Orange County, man. It's just, it's rough. Too many wrecks. There's like 10 wrecks already. That bugs me. Why? We live in the United States of America, the most technologically advanced country in the history of civilization. We can put a man on the moon. Why can't we make the things we run into softer? <laughs> we have the technology. Bumper cars. Get in a wreck, have fun, woo! <laughs> Get cruddy, people, off the road. He's going three in the fast lane, got him. Boom. Ha! <laughs> and the other guy's not mad. It's a bumper car, he's playing along. You got me. <laughs> oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Ever tried to steer a bumper car? No more traffic jams. Nobody can go the same way. See ya. Okay, what? You going to work? I don't know. I haven't been home in two weeks for crying out loud. Man, do I have to go to the bathroom. This is really rough. Hey, folks, it's God's coming, Brad Stein. I know I'm ruining your enjoyment of this special that no one's ever seen before. I need you to do me a favor. My career changed when I decided to be a conservative and a Christian, but guess what? It also opened up doors I never thought were possible. If you can help me, here's how. Subscribe and like right now and share this YouTube video with everybody you know. But I need your subscriptions. We're going to build this up into something where I can continue to make this type of content, standing up for God and country and turn down political correctness because I want to watch it die in my lifetime. It what makes me unique. It what makes me one of a kind. So please subscribe right now. And if you do, I'll let you get back to the show. Hey, it's free. Enjoy it. You're welcome. God's going to make. Enjoy the show. We need to change things. Too many wrecks and it's bugging me. See, I think what's happened is people getting a lot of wrecks because we're, we're, we're really getting too many things in our cars and we get confused. 
You know, it started with radios, and then we got all kinds of stuff in our car. Now we got phones in our cars. I never understood that. Phones in the car, come on. If I can't park my car in your living room, I don't want your phone in my car. That's why I'm gonna play this, okay? Let's be consistent here. The people have everything, so we're distracted. But I don't think people are afraid to get in wrecks anymore, because why? We have bags to shoot out protectors. Before there were bags, you never saw cars with phones, did you? Now they shoot out from every angle. It's like people want to get in wrecks to see what it feels like. Got in a wreck. <laughs> the kids loved it. <laughs> bags shooting out, it's unbelievable. We need to take the bags out so people start paying attention. Now look at kids, I see kids everywhere. You know what, they're looking at me like I'm crazy. Why, because I said bags. They look at me, of course, bags. Why? They have grown up in a bag world. They've never known anything but bags. They think bags were always how it was. All the cars have bags. Makes sense to have bags. Oh, but the Model T had bags. Wasn't sophisticated, just a midget with a paper sack. <laughs> no bags. See all these scars on my face? I had to go through windshields so kids like you could have bags. <laughs> we didn't have anything. Kids today, they get completely nothing can harm a child in a car anymore. They got a special car seat in the back seat right in the middle where nothing can go in. We're facing, nothing can happen. Nothing can go wrong. When I was a kid, when I was your age, guess where they stuck us? Front seat, no car seat, no bags, no seat belt. You know what protected us? Mom's arm. <laughs> Christ, dummy tests you think it took for them to realize this isn't effective? <laughs> I'd like to see those dummy tests. <laughs> Kids getting blown away. Going through the windshield. I had to, they didn't have to. And that's how we are. We got so much stuff in our cars that they've become so valuable that we don't want to lose them, so we stick alarms in them. We never had alarms in our cars. Nobody cared. Years ago, you didn't have an alarm because you didn't care if somebody stole your car. It was worth 10 bucks. Here, put some gas in it. Take it. <laughs> we have alarms in our homes. What has happened to our country? We're turned into a prison. See, it used to be such an innocent age. These kids will never know that. They know alarms in their homes. We, it used to be so simple when we were kids. Remember that? Go to leave the house. Don't want to get robbed. Leave a light on. Remember that simple thing? Leave a light on. Like professional burglars are going, let's take the house. Wait, the whole family's in the bathroom. Come on! <laughs> 24 hours a day, quit drinking tea! <laughs> I don't know why I'm walking like this. I don't know what this means at all. I don't know. <laughs> Apparently professional burglars walk like this. Okay, let's go. I... That'd make it easy to pick him out of a lineup. Ma'am, who robbed your house? I think it was a guy in the middle. Hey, what gives me away? <laughs> I like you people. You laugh and stop simultaneously. I've never seen this before. <laughs> These people are sweet. You're like, <laughs> we're done. <laughs> I rest my case. Thank you. <laughs> See, it's too crazy out there. We people are confused. They get in their cars and they don't know what to do. They got everything going, they got a phone call, got a thing going on, got a bumper sticker they gotta read, that's what I love. Another thing we need to be doing at 80 miles an hour, reading, another good idea. <laughs> what is left? Let's see, we got the radio, we got a phone, we're reading, we've got a pedal, all we need is to make an omelet with this foot, we're good, shut, good to go. I love bumper stickers, they have one purpose, you're supposed to read them, that's all they're for. And yet, when you read them, they make fun of you. You ever had that happen? You, do, you read it like you're supposed to, then suddenly you're the idiot? If you can read this, you're too close. Well, if you didn't put it on your car, I wouldn't have to get so close to see what it said, you big dog. That's what we need, a dork signal for people that do stupid stuff. I put a bump sticker on my car, but don't read it. Oh, very clever view then. I'll do it. I saw a bumper sticker on a guy's car today. It said, God is my co-pilot. So I sped up to see who was driving. <laughs> I want to drive with a guy so good, God's yelling shotgun. This is the guy I want to hang with. <laughs> I think a good rule of thumb is God's in the car, let him drive. <laughs> He's got insurance, he can talk himself out of tickets. This guy's toting God around and bragging about it. Like God couldn't handle it himself. No, you take the wheel. I'm not familiar with this area. <laughs> uh, 
I hope you have bags. <laughs> Last thing I need is God as a backseat driver. He'd be too good. That man's swerving. Where? Three minutes from now. <laughs> hey, look out for wrecks. They're everywhere. I know. What? I know. Well, you know everything. I know. You're driving me crazy. I know. Stop it. Why? I don't know. I do. <laughs> oh, God. What? Stop it. <laughs> So quick! He's fast. I know. People don't think about God. We do. We think about him, but we don't think about him right. We try to think about him like people think about God. I'd like to have a conversation with God. How would you even bring something up? Hey, God, you know what I was thinking? Yeah. <laughs> I've known for years. Come on! <laughs> We're rubbing it in. Oh, we get confused, though. We get confused. Because we're people and we're doing the best we can, but it's rough out there because we've become a baby nation. We are just a bunch of babies. We used to be a strong nation. You know what we used to do? We used to build our own homes. We used to go out and cut wood down, make a home. We used to hunt animals, made our own food. Now we can't do any of that stuff. Oh, don't hurt the animals. Don't hunt the animals. Don't wear fur, don't wear fur. You know, I love these people. You have the right to not wear fur, but then they always get mad at the people that disagree with them. That's not tolerance. Don't wear fur. Well, I'm gonna wear fur, but you don't have to. No, don't wear fur. Well, I think I'm going to, because it's still a free country. Murderer! <laughs> these people just make you want to like mess with them. Yeah, so yeah, I'm wearing fur underwear right now. <laughs> I wear fur all the time. I got a fur house, I got a fur car, fur lined everything. Yes, sir. I go to the store, they go paper plastic. I say fur! <laughs> Fur. What about leather? Where's everybody saying don't wear leather, huh? You hardly hear those people. Leather is dried meat for crying out loud. People spending $500 to wear beef jerky with a zipper. That's what. <laughs> bugging me. People are bugging me. They get mad because they want the kid, because they, they want the, the rights, they want the animals to have rights. Oh, I'm not anti-animal. I'm not anti-animal. I'm just pro-people. That's all I am. I'm pro-human. I'm pro-human. I'm tired of people that tell them that they live in a country that's gotten so cockeyed that 1,250,000 unborn children can be killed by the, to today on purpose, sometimes subsidized by the government, and yet you can go to jail for abusing a dog. I'm sick of that. I'm tired of that, you see, because I don't want to hurt animals, but by, you know, if it comes between an animal, they, man, let the animal go. I don't care about the animals. The animals, yo, know, you gotta be humane. Humane means human. Why do I have to be human to an animal? Here's the rule. You're supposed to just be to the animal what they are to you. Okay, let's think about it. Whale gets onto the beach. What do we do? Spend a million dollars to throw them back into the water, because that's how we are. We fall into the water. Let's see, what the fish do? They eat us. <laughs> Here's the problem, everybody's getting mad at the human beings. Oh, we gotta be nice to animals. If you care about animals, go to the animal kingdom and teach them to be nice to each other. Go help the wildebeests. Have you ever seen any show where the wildebeests have ever get a good deal? Ever, never. There's like eight million wildebeests, right? A cheetah runs at them, they all run away. Why doesn't somebody help them? Look, there's more of you, you're bigger and stronger. Stop, circle them, gore them, kick them, he'll run away. But what do they do? Oh look, the leopard's got old crippled Elmer. Whatever. <laughs> Help him! See, because I'll tell you why. Here's why. Because it's intellectual lies. They're not real. See, they don't really care about animals because why? They only care about certain kinds of animals. Where's the fish rights activists? <laughs> never. Never see them. Never see somebody chaining themselves to a dock. Be kind to carp. Never happens! <laughs> When people say animal rights, what they mean is cuddly, fuzzy animals. Whales and harp seals, but nobody cares about fish. I mean, if you care about an animal get hurt, then how come they're, they're never going against these fisher guys that catch fish? I mean, they're the most ruthless hunters I've ever seen. You shoot an animal, it's dead. 
You catch an animal with a fish, look at these guys. You like battle it for 20 minutes, pull it out of its environment, it's suffocating now. In the meantime, you're taking pictures, showing it around, flapping it around, <laughs> taking pliers, rip the hook out of his face, and then throw him back. <laughs> if I'm a fish, I'm thinking, what was that all about? <laughs> Eat me! <laughs> I got a big hole in my face now, thanks to you, I'm a freak. I gotta join some fish sideshow. Oh, hi, I'm Blowhole. Give him some dignity, cut his head off and eat him. <laughs> they don't care about the fish. They don't care about them. You can't give a right to an animal, a right to the philosophical concept that based on the premise that you realize you exist, which means you know you can die. Animals don't know they can die. They're not afraid to die. They're afraid of getting chased. <laughs> you chase them, they run off. If they get away, they come back to the wide and hole and never think about it again. They don't know what death is. Take a gun, stick it in your dog's head. It doesn't beg for its life, it licks it! <laughs> Where's the bug rights activist? Where's the bug? Nobody cares about bugs. Why? Because they're ugly and they're stupid. Bugs are about as stupid as it comes. They have no concept of windshields, do they, folks? <laughs> You have never hit the rear end of a bug. They are never running away. <laughs> they don't know what glass is. It's clear to them. That's their model. If it's clear, it ain't here. <laughs> they don't know what happened. They're just, come on. <laughs> That's got to take you by surprise. What do they tell their friends in bug heaven? How'd you die? I don't know. <laughs> Lying down the road and blew up. They don't have reasoning. They don't know. It's like all the bug scientists trying to figure it out. Apparently, some parts of the atmosphere appear to be more dense. <laughs> they don't know what glass is, even if they're in your car. That's what kills me. They get in the car, they try to go out through the glass. Come on! <laughs> go this way. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and we get so frustrated, we begin to reason with the bug. Hey, hey! Go out the window! <laughs> You can go through! <laughs> Where are the bugs right activists? They don't exist. Fish rights, nobody exists. It's just the cuddly animal activists. That's all I'm talking about. I'm saying being intellectually pure. Be true. Care about things again. That's what I want. I want a place that cares about things. I'm so tired of these people. I'm so tired of everybody just talking about crazy stuff like all the kids that are killing each other. It's a horrible situation. What is it always happening in school? What are kids taught in school? That they're animals. They're taught this. No God, they're an accident. Survival of the fittest. You come from apes. They're animals, this is your family. And when they act like animals, ooh, what happened? Tired of that. Somebody's gotta say something about it. And no other comedian stands up and says it, because they don't want to lay and stay on the left side, because they're cowards. <laughs> cowards! I believe in God. Not afraid of that, not ashamed of that at all. I stand for that. Why is that, folks? Uh huh. How come the scientists never believe in God, but the poets always do? Huh? I'd rather be on the artist's side. I'd rather stand on those side of the people that have something to believe in. Because we live in a great country, folks, but it's going down fast. I'll tell you what, if you ever travel to any other country, you'll know what great country this is. I went to France. Anybody do a France thing? Everybody do that? I went to France. You know what they told me? Don't go to France because they hate Americans and they're arrogant. I don't believe in that, folks. I don't believe in judging people as groups. I believe in judging people as individuals, giving them each an individual chance to meet you and on that basis accept who they are and deal with them on that level. That's love. That's commitment. I believe in that. I went to France. I met the French. They're the most arrogant, pathetic people I have ever met. <laughs> And they stink. Did I throw that in yet? They're stinky. <laughs> Nothing worse than a stinky French guy. <laughs> they were, they were nuts. And you know what it is? 
people I tried to speak French to. And, 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 and I couldn't. I'm not good at it, right? But here's the thing. If you go to France, you don't speak French perfect, they don't correct you. They just freak out. You don't know what to expect. Oh, yes, je ne sais tout de suite. No, 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 je ne sais tout de suite. All right, I'll keep the croissant. That's good. All right. I think they just make it up so you can't possibly do it right. I mean, they just make up the pronunciation as they go along. Oh, yeah, je ne sais tout de suite. That's why they call it French. You can't speak it without your tongue flopping out. Oh, you're so beautiful. Ah. That's how they talk in France. It scares you the first time. You go, hey, buddy, where's the Apple Tower? Over there. <laughs> That's not in the travel guide. Quit it! Don't ask these people for long directions. Go, there, 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 Because when I first got to France, they could have said anything. I thought it was a compliment. Monsieur le Président, tout aujourd'hui. Well, I don't know what you said, but... <laughs> yes, I do sleep in bologna, thank you. <laughs> She's looking at me, like, that's how they dance in France. You've never been to France, have you? Then you wouldn't know, Here's how, that's how they do it, right? I'm just setting her up. She's gonna go to France someday. Let's dance! <laughs> Chocolate bleu. She must be from San Diego. Your family people, I love that about people like you, your family people, you care about your families. I had a surprise 65th birthday party from my mom and she was mad, cause she's 50. But still, uh, <laughs> well, if I'm spinning that kind of dough, I wanna make sure she remembers it. I'm telling you that right now. Just forgetting stuff, cause I got an old grandmother who I love. I love old grandmothers, cause they're just so sweet. And what's great about old people is that they know what's important, what isn't. Young people always think, remember that when you were young, you always thought old people were freaks. Like they started that way. But that was her call. Yes, I want to be feeble. Push me over, quickly. <laughs> we all start out young. We make it the old person teen. That's what we forget. We want to make it to their team. We want to get old if we can. And they don't care about stupid stuff. Look at old people. They wear clothes you never would have caught dead in years ago. <laughs> they don't care. My grandmother's 90. I can wrap her up in aluminum foil. She's out the door. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> the neighbors are used to it. Up, oh, Grandma's in a space suit again. Good. Okay. <laughs> I love grandmothers, they're sweet and wonderful. I have one question only. Where do they find their perfume? <laughs> and is it supposed to sear the iris? Is that what they're shooting for? Because suddenly it's not a fragrance around grandma, it's a force field. <laughs> Hit you from 30 feet away like an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Hey grandma, hi. thick and it never goes anywhere it's thin if you're a grandmother i love you to death quick tip okay perfume doesn't age like wine throw it away <laughs> i'll lend you two bucks you can buy another chug <laughs> they just pour it on like they can't smell it anymore like, <laughs> it does come in handy if they wander away though it makes a great homing device i'll tell you right now you cannot lose your grandmother anymore where'd she go i don't know <laughs> Right over here. <laughs> She's in the cupboard with the Tupperware again. Come on, Grandma! Get that lid off your head. Come on! I don't do that to her. I do, but she forgets. Um, see how I go? Ever see people do that? That's what that, animal lovers do that too. I love animal people. I, I, I do. I joke about you, but I do. Because they like go to a zoo, they try to talk to every animal they see. Like they know their secret life. <laughs> Do any animals make those sounds? <laughs> and if they do, run away! I mean, if you're gonna try to speak to an animal, shouldn't you try to make at least an animal sound that they may have heard of in nature? You know? <laughs> Something! But they, 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 we're talking about a species that doesn't even use language, but they think they just make up a sign, suddenly that animal will know what that means. You can't even do that to people! Oh, you don't speak English? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. <laughs> They're not you guys. You're San Diego people. 
You're sweet people. You get here, you come here on the millennium, and you get here on time. You don't mess around. I love that. I can't stand people that are late all the time. How come we always let people that are late all the time? Everybody knows, everybody here knows somebody that gets late all the time, and nobody ever says anything. We're always afraid. Like, we should be embarrassed. People that come in late all the time, they always laugh about it. I hate that. Oh, running late. <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> Talking about not wanting to take, what does that even mean? Running late. Excuse me, if you were running, you should have made it. <laughs> running late doesn't even make sense. Yeah, I want to be late as fast as I can. Nobody ever calls these people. Nobody ever tells them quit being late. It's rude. The only people we ever allow ourselves to say are late are people who aren't alive anymore. Well, this was the late John Smith. <laughs> the late Margaret Hamilton. Yeah, you know why they're late? They're dead! They have an excuse. Not only are they late, they're probably not even gonna make it. <laughs> what I think. That's why you're here, to hear what I think. Oh well, I move on. I see things though, you know, I understand things about my family and I appreciate families. My mother was evil. <laughs> she used to feed me something called casserole. That's a French word, it means mom didn't shop, apparently. <laughs> that was the problem with casserole, nobody ever wanted one. Nobody ever worked hard all day longing for a casserole. It was always a disappointment. It was like a Dickens novel. Mother, I worked so hard, my back is bent, my knees are weak. What's for dinner? Casserole. <laughs> Could I have gruel? And they always try to give casseroles a fancy name so you think that it's something better than it is. Oh, we're having goulash. Casserole. No, that's the original pronunciation from the Latin Vulgate goulashes casserole. No, she's vom just throw up. Because it was like smashed up food. It was weird. It was like smashed up meat and macaroni with some kind of rubber barf looking cheese. It smashed. I'm a little kid. I'm like, I can't eat this nice food, mother. I cannot eat this nice food, mother. She said the famous mom thing. You eat like a bird. You eat like a bird. You eat like a bird. I'm thinking, Mom, it's because you chew up my food before you give it to me. <laughs> she got mad and washed my mouth out with soap. I believe in discipline, my friends. I believe in discipline. But where did we ever come up with the idea that it's rational to stick soap in your kid's mouth? I mean, if that's true, then why stop there? Why not use all the cleaning products from another sink to help your kids? Let's have different soaps for different sins. Dirty words, soap in the mouth. Oh, reading a dirty magazine. Comet in the eyes. There you go, Johnny. <laughs> Ow. I'm ready for my goulash now, mother. <laughs> I smell grandma. But... <clears throat> There's a phrase you never want to hear. I smell grandma. It's your turn. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm out of the loop. Oh. I get tired of the whining, I guess, folks. That's what I say. I, I get tired of the whining. See, because we used to be so strong as a, as, a, as a group, as a country. We used to be strong people. Now we whine about everything. I'm tired of it. The most sophisticated whiners are these frivolous lawsuit people. Where does this come from? Ow! I hurt myself somehow, but I'm gonna blame you. <laughs> Why'd you stick your head in the bear trap? Because there wasn't a sign that says, don't stick your head in the bear trap. <laughs> We laugh because it's true. Do you realize we live in a country now that you need a sign to tell people that coffee is hot? <laughs> we need a sign to let people know that electricity might sting a little. <laughs> that a building's high. No, what we need is a big fat sign we stick in every other sign from now on. It says this, if you are stupid, stay home. <laughs> Woo. But we don't. And people whine then. So we gotta stop, we gotta nip it in the bud. We can stop it too, you know how? Stop the simple whining and then we'll move on to the bigger stuff. Like the weather whiners. People always complaining about the weather. Oh, it's so cold. Oh my gosh, it is so cold. 
First off, why does anybody ever think they need to tell the rest of us what the weather feels like? <laughs> like only they can interpret the atmosphere. Oh, it's so cold. Oh, you're a weatherman. You're a weatherman. <laughs> Let me tell you what cold is. You think it's cold out there? I was in Winnipeg, Canada once in January. <laughs> Are you ready? 70 below. 70. And people live there. On purpose. <laughs> I could understand if it was a place of exile. But they want to be there with their kids. I tried to reason with them, hey, it's 70 below, something's broken. <laughs> Swear all Canadians, oh, she'll been here last year, it's really cold. <laughs> They've adapted to 70 below as though that's normal, but it's very stupid if you ask me. I don't want to reach a point in my life where 70 below zero is considered nippy. Thank you. <laughs> I don't want to live in a place where you go out to get the mail and then you die. <laughs> I don't want to live in a town where everybody smokes because nobody wants to prolong their life expectancy. <laughs> we got like three-year-olds. <laughs> you got cancer yet? No! <laughs> I don't even have a tumor yet. <laughs> So many low people get knocked out of the house, honey. <laughs> and the problem with the whiners is it's not genuine. Take them out of the cold, stick them in the hot. They whine. I worked in Vegas. Last time I worked in Vegas was at the MGM Grand Hotel, Las Vegas, Nevada. Very similar to this. And, uh... <laughs> well, the kids were dressed up a little nicer, but, uh... At the MGM Grand, we have people, y'all been to Vegas, right? The San Diego people's Vegas never got it. It's a Christian crowd. We got all the people going, we've never actually heard of Las Vegas. So. <laughs> Is that in the Babylonian Empire? <laughs> I'll look that one up in my concordance. <laughs> yeah, we've never, we live in San Diego, we've never been to Vegas. Good to have the Pharisees and Sadducees with us tonight. I'm glad to have you guys out here. Glad to have you with us. Yeah, it's good. No, really, just wear your robes and masks, all you need. Go ahead, please. I went to Vegas, I worked there many times. First time I ever went to Vegas was in the month of July, by the way, folks. If you've ever never been to Vegas, you're thinking about taking a little family, get away to Vegas in July, do this. <laughs> it was, it was 120! And it should be, it's the desert! That's where 120 hangs out. <laughs> there were people there going, it's so hot. Oh, you think it's hot in the desert in the summer? See, I couldn't have figured that one out without you. <laughs> they go to the desert and think it's hot. They go swimming, it's so wet, it's so wet. <laughs> I didn't realize it'd be so aqua -y. <laughs> The problem is not, is it hot in the desert? The problem is, why would you start a town there? What are your options? Well, we don't have enough fuel to make it to the surface of the sun. <laughs> it's all in here. Okay, Brigham, let's go to Vegas. New Orleans. <laughs> hey, the ocean's over there. No, we're stopping in the middle. Okay, you're the prophet. I'm putting sunscreen on, it's crawling off. You're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> they don't walk their dogs during the day. I thought because they might caca. No, because they might burst in the flame. It was Harry Poodles. Come on, beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Vegas, Mexican word, it means move, you idiot. There's cactus in the desert. If you see cactus, keep going. Even the cactus is saying, stop. <laughs> Listen to the cactus. That's right. We've got to heed these warnings, folks. We live in a crazy world. We live in a world where magazines dictate how we should feel about ourselves. We live in a world where people have to get dressed up special, wear special clothes and special makeup. That's what kills me, women. Poor women. I feel sorry for women in our country. They're taught by magazines, you know, how do we got to be this thin, wear this stuff. Multi-billion dollar industry based on the fact that apparently your face as is, is ugly. 
I mean, that's what people say. Women will actually say, I can't go outside. Why? Gotta put my face on. <laughs> Gotta put my face on. Like their face wasn't there before. That is pathetic to me. I mean, if your face is that ugly, man, they should be like slapping stuff on little baby girls right off the bat. They come out of the womb. Ah, she's hideous. Nurse, get some mascara on that baby immediately. <laughs> Quickly, get her face on so her parents can tell who she looks like. <laughs> Women have hair products and makeup products they gotta put on, it's not fair. They got nail polish for crying out loud. How'd that ever catch on? That's why they call it nail polish. It's not polish, it's paint. Polish is above and a shine. You painted stuff. Where on your body did, can you tell me where any other place paint would be? I don't even understand that. It's like you slop paint all over the place. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Not right. We do this to ourselves. We put ourselves in bondage because we've made rules we weren't supposed to have. Why do I have to say pardon me for something my body does? Not a sin, folks. We make up the rules. Pardon me, sounds like something you'd only have to do if your body did something that nobody else has had ever done. <laughs> but when we say pardon me, yawn, sneeze, burp, and then what do you do? You gotta act ashamed like it never happened to anybody else. Oh, pardon me. Oh, pardon me. Pardon me. <laughs> Why do I have to pardon myself for yawn and a burp and you yawn and burp? I'll tell you what, next time I'm gonna say pardon me, next time fire shoots out of my pants. How about that? <laughs> That would be worth an apology. <laughs> Cause you wouldn't see that coming. Nobody expects fire to shoot out of their pants. Hard part would be to keep from laughing. Go to that big job interview, Mr. Beeman. Says, <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> I swear that's never happened before. <laughs> oh, is she okay? Oh my God. Oh, good thing I wasn't yawning. <laughs> What's the mystery with the yawn? You're not allowed to yawn. You gotta cover it up. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Hope you didn't look in. <laughs> it's so embarrassing that people start to yawn, they try to hold it in, like you're not gonna notice. <laughs> oh, nothing looks more natural than that. Is that right? Some people start talking to you and they start to yawn, so they just try to talk through the yawn like you're not gonna figure that out. They think they're being subtle. You think they're having a seizure right in front of you. If it's a long sentence, they'll regress through another life form. Yeah, I thought what we do is we'd have a If that's okay with you. And when you yawn, nobody says anything. When you cough, nobody says anything. But if you sneeze, what do they say? God bless you. Now, God bless you is a nice thing to say, but how come you don't get blessed by God if you cough or yawn or burp? <laughs> Apparently, they're not quite as miraculous. <laughs> Sneeze, and I don't understand. God bless you. We used to say, God bless you for special occasions. You help the sick and the lepers. God bless you. How did a sneeze weasel its way into this thing? <laughs> I mean, that's the worst thing you can do to somebody. <gasps> you got germs all over me. God bless you for that. <laughs> if anything deserves a God bless you, it's the yawn, because you're sucking the germs into your body. <laughs> Cleansing the environment. Why, that virus could have been intended for me. God bless you. <laughs> We're so weird with our bodies. Christians are that way. Christ me up, man. You know, here I sit here as a Christian man. I work in comedy clubs and headline comedy clubs all over our country, folks, doing exactly like this, 100% curse-free, and I do the same material that I do for my church brothers and sisters as I do out there in the world to show them that creativity is funnier than crude, see? And so I have to do it in a way. I didn't expect it. You see, you do that, folks, by doing it like this. The context of my show will always be for secular people. The content will always be for Christians. Because I'm Christian.
to consequently my worldview will have to come out in my material. So I'm going to stand for things, but I'm going to do it in a way that they can dig it. Because I don't need to sell clean comedy to you, you already bought it. I'm trying to sell it to the people that didn't know it was any good. I got to redefine clean. Clean's not corny anymore. Clean's not corny anymore. That's why we get out there, we try to do these things, but we get so weird. But then Christians, I come to them to offer the same thing, and then they're weird about stuff. Christians are so strange. I mean, we get weird about, you know, talking about stuff and weird things and do weird stuff. I don't know. We're all, you know, we're all in the same boat. Because our bodies are just freak us out. You know, you think if we didn't have fingernails, we would have found another part of our body to bite pieces off of? <laughs> people bite their fingernails off, and you know, people say, oh, that's a bad habit. Oh! Consuming yourself <laughs> is a bad habit. How long did it take for, for them to figure that out, huh? The Middle Ages were the, uh, like down to nubs. Oh, we must stop at this. We must stop it. <laughs> it's too out there. It's too difficult. Because we're men and women doing the best we can. Doing the best we can. Because we're similar. See, we don't realize that. Men and women do have similar energy. We do. We have similar names. You got a man? You got a wolf man. You got a male? You got a female. So apparently we're all man male. But women achieve the fee and the woe. Why? <laughs> why is your name two letters better than ours? I know why, because you've achieved a higher rank than we have. <laughs> it's a higher rank. There's aspects of women that are superior to men. I don't have a problem with that. Number one, women are more attractive than men. Hey, <laughs> oh yeah. Even the guys are going, eh, oh he's right. He's right on that one. <laughs> We're pretty ugly, yeah, basically. <laughs> Women are more attractive. You're better looking than we are. You're more aesthetically pleasing to the eye. That's why they made art out of women for thousands and thousands of years. That's why they gave you the better looking name so we can tell you apart. You look at him, you go, man. You look at her, you go, whoa, man. <laughs> Plus women have power because women have purses. <laughs> women can survive in the desert for years with the items in their purse alone. <laughs> Amelia Earhart is alive somewhere, <laughs> eating lipstick. <laughs> I never look in a woman's purse, they have things that her men have never seen before. Crazy products, Vaseline, lip therapy. Never heard of that. Starting a girl's purse, lip therapy. What do you do? Put it on your lips and says, tell me about your mother. What happens with that stuff? <laughs> they got a product in case their lips go over the edge. We can't find our inner child. Women have purses, purses have purse strings. Purse strings means money, money is power. Women have purses, they have power. Does that mean the better than men? No, it means you made yourselves more valuable than men. Why? Because women are more committed to relationships, which makes a strong unit and a bond and a family. Men are not good at committing. As you know, we have to learn how. We try, I will love you and only you. <laughs> there goes another one. Men are pathetic. We have to learn. We're not as good as at you. Women aren't that way. They see the man they want, they grab him. Not by the lapel, by the soul. Yeah, you gotta have him. Yeah, you can't live without him. And by the way, women don't just give themselves away like men do. They make you earn them. And that's why you got a male and you got a female. Because you can have that male for nothing. But with this male, there's a fee involved. <laughs> You want a woe, man, it's gonna cost you. <laughs> and it should, you're the best of us. You're part of, a, of the concept of men and women because we are that way, we're human beings doing the best we can. Look at the first ones, Adam and Eve, that must have been rough being the first people. A lot of pressure, make one mistake, everybody reads it. <laughs> we never give them enough credit. Look at the pressure Adam had. He had to name every single animal that ever existed on the face of the earth. Now that would be hard. Every one of us could thought of maybe 10 good names we would have quit. He had to name everything. That's why so many animal names are stupid. <laughs> the man got burnt out. He was ashamed by the end. You know, the first day he gave out all the good names. Yes, you shall be Hippopotamus. <laughs> Big proud scientific 12 letter name. Go forth. Hippopotamus. <laughs> Two days later, cow. <laughs> the 
else I can bear. I can't think of any more good ones. <laughs> Ox, I guess. <laughs> By the time the bugs got in line, he just named them whatever they were doing at the moment. <laughs> Fly! <laughs> of all the incredible things that fly in this world, Fly got the name. That's when God stepped in. I'll take it from here, Adam. Thanks anyways. <laughs> I was gonna stop you after the grasshopper, but I gave you one more shot. Does that mean men are stupid? No. Guys know things girls know. Guys know things girls don't. Guys know that eventually toenails dissolve on the carpet. We know that one. That's what we know. <laughs> Women have never understood the mystery of the carpet. Spill something. If you don't like it, grind it in. Goes away. <laughs> it's a labor-saving device. Like dropping an ice cube out of the fridge. Pick it up. Heck no. Kick it under the fridge. <laughs> That's gonna hurt you. So what we do, we sit there and clip our nails. <laughs> Women come by, put a waste basket under that! <laughs> Why, toenails don't fall down, they shoot off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not looking for it. <laughs> In the rug, it's gone. <laughs> we don't understand. See, men have never done that. Men have never understand these things. We don't get it, we don't understand clothes. Men have never understood clothing. Women invented clothing. They continue to manufacture clothing, including men's clothing, and they turn men's clothing into a gag gift. That's why guys can't put their underwear on in the morning without tripping. <laughs> guys know what I mean. What's the deal with that second hole in your underwear? You miss it every time. <laughs> why are the wives laughing like they know something? First hole, no problem. Second hole, big toe catches. I'm in a rodeo. <laughs> Women in the closet with the control box. Damn, you fool. <laughs> Eight seconds. <laughs> Running out of time, folks. It's good, though. We got plenty of time till the new year. 40 minutes. But, uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, it's, it's, it's rough for us out there. You know, we gotta, we, gotta, we gotta change some stuff. We gotta get back to basics here. Like we used to be. Strong nation. Stand for something, man. Stand for something. That's the other thing. We're all just cowards. Everybody's ashamed. Everybody's embarrassed of everything. You know, we don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> man, just get a spine, somebody. Get a spine. We used to be. Don't. It's scary. <laughs> you are in my power. You know, it's hard to be human, that's all I ever said. I just used more words earlier. So I come up here and I thank you. You're part of Horizon Christian Fellowship because uh, that's like the fifth thing I've done for you guys this year. They're just working me to death and I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate people that are behind something that hopefully is a little bit innovative, a little bit cutting edge. That's what I'm trying to do is what they call Coined a phrase, cutting edge clean comedy. I'm trying to show clean isn't corny. That it can be just as cutting edge, that it can be just as socially relevant, that it can have just as strong a point of view, that it can be just as hip. And you don't have to use words to get there, the curse words. People always say they need those. Oh yeah, for the creativity, no. It's because you're lazy. Because you don't have, anybody that's ever performed knows it's much, much more difficult to be clean. They don't buy that. If you, if you want uh, somebody because they're dirty, that's up to you, but don't say because you don't have options. Because we're bringing them to you now. It's what that CD is. That CD that he just showed you that, we have, that I'm selling just came off this thing. It's the first one I got out. And, you, and, I, and I happened to get a few copies of ahead before they're even distributed. You guys can buy some at the merchandise table. You'll be the first ones to have an opportunity to buy them. Rebel okay. thought a curse. You know, I just want you guys to enjoy this new year. Let's just change some things. Let's change this world, huh? Let's change this country. Yeah. Let's just do it, you know what I mean? And we do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We can change this country, folks, but we don't do it. You know, we're not gonna do it by sticking in here and sticking in the churches, you know? 
We come to the church to get fed so we can go out into the world into our regular jobs and stand for something. With dignity, with love, with pride, and with courage, and with hope, and with peace. That's what people want. I think it was Einstein that said, the more I see the universe, the more I see myself. And the more I look at myself, the more I realize I could use a comb. And <laughs> if you're not laughing, get any picture of Albert Einstein. <laughs> Arguably the greatest thinker of the 20th century, found brushing his hair too complex. <laughs> Savant, we don't know. But there's a lot of things we don't know, folks. It's got to stop. It's got to stop right now. First thing we got to do is start quit keep keeping people from whining. The second thing we got to do is got quit keeping uh, people from treating us stupid. Starts with your parents. Mom couldn't give you one chore to do without a disclaimer. Can I bring me the scissors? Don't cut yourself. Uh oh, that's a good one right there. <laughs> Why do parents think we're that stupid? That's a hot dish. Don't burn yourself. Good tip, mother. Good tip. Thank you very much. It happens all the time. I moved out, I was a village idiot. Hot plate, ah, scissors, oh my gosh. <laughs> Your dad does it, son, climb up on that ladder, don't fall. Nah. <laughs> like that was an option ever. <laughs> when in the history of recorded time did kids climb ladders and fling themselves off? <laughs> like that's half the fun, don't fall. Okay, I'll dangle. Okay. <laughs> okay. Every summer, my dad, son, never stick your hand under the lawnmower. Nah. <laughs> Funny never even crossed my mind. Is that how kids lose their hands? They don't have a dad? <laughs> I feel sorry for the orphan kid. He's down to a torso. Help us! <laughs> Every summer, my dad, <laughs> got your nose. I don't care how young you are, you're always like, I don't think so. <laughs> how do you respond to that? Oh, but it's incredibly lifelike. <laughs> oh yeah, if it wasn't for the nail, you would have had me there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to play, he'd go, got your nose. I'd say, okay, got your thumb, ha. <laughs> I'm one step ahead of you. It never ends. How come people with answer machines are still leaving instructions? Leave your name, leave your number, leave your time that you call, then after the beep, I'll know who it is and I'll call you back. Hey, hey, we know what to do. <laughs> Just say, not here, beep. <laughs> but they leave instructions like they did, and suddenly we'd panic and leave a cake recipe. <laughs> <laughs> How come every time people in the, have to go to the restroom in public, they always tell you, I'm going to the restroom. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> I've been going for years. <laughs> and why do people always say, I'll be right back. Oh, there's a novelty right there. <laughs> I'll be right back. What else would you say? I'm going to the restroom. And you'll never see me again. <laughs> Cause that's happening all the time now. People go in the restaurant and end up in Aruba. That's happening all the time. <laughs> Can't join the military, they've got jets painted camouflage. Oh, that's a good one, not there. Camouflage jets, I don't know. You think we're underestimating our enemies just a smidge? <laughs> Baking people out, ah, jet, yeah, plant, plant. <laughs> Those Americans are devious. Can't go to the movies anymore unless you know the secret language. Can I help you? Yeah, I'd like a Coke. Pepsi? Coke. <laughs> Coke. Pepsi okay? <laughs> Give me seven up. Sprite? Ah! <laughs> Dr. Pep? Mr. Pib? What? <laughs> Try it on them. That's 350. 25 cents, thank you. I had a guy sell me a ticket and not let me in. Can I see your stub? Can I see your stub? You gotta nail this guy. What? Fine! <laughs> but that is rude, man. <laughs> My girlfriend's in a wheelchair. You want me to bring it on and spin around for you? I'll make you happy. <laughs> Women send you a one-page letter. At the bottom of the first side, they write over with an arrow. In case you didn't know paper had two sides. <laughs> They actually point the arrow so you know which way to turn the paper over. <laughs> oh, what a revelation. Paper has another dimension. I can finish my books now. <laughs> Don't ever tell a guy you can't find your keys. Hey, man, can't find my keys. Well, where'd you leave them? 
That's kind of the point, Mr. Buddy, right? <laughs> then they have a follow-up. Did you check your pockets? Nope, saving those for last. <laughs> Let's keep digging in the backyard. <laughs> I'm going on the roof. Maybe the lodge in a shingle. <laughs> and lastly, and I'll let you go. How can you walk in any convenience store, put your two items down, step back, cross your arms, look at the guy, and he goes, will that be all? <laughs> like there's a grander scheme to all of this. No, you fool. No, that would be too easy. No, these are the two things I don't want. <laughs> Remove them, they disgust me. I've come for the rest of the items in the store. It will be my empire! We're taking over, Christians! God bless you! Happy New Year! Good night!